what you are seeing right now is Minecraft but it is created using HTML. So now you can play Minecraft in your web browser. Let's see how I created this using HTML. Before that, if you are wondering how I created these things using HTML, let me explain. HTML is the most powerful programming language ever known to the man throughout the history. There are actual peoples out there who hacked NASA using HTML. Just kidding. HTML is not a programming language, it is a markup language. Which used to create websites. Peoples usually use CSS and JavaScript along with HTML to create fully functional websites. But we are going to create Minecraft using these things. So first we have to find a way to render 3D objects in our web browser. And luckily we have 3. 3? I mean 3.js. It is a JavaScript library helps to render 3D objects in our web browsers. And we don't have to render any kind of complex 3D shapes because in our case it's just a cube. So after writing some lines of code, we can see our cube in the browser. So let's add some more cubes in a straight line to create a plane. And just like that, we have our plane. What is this? And just like that, we have our plane. So let's create some terrains. Terrains can be generated by just changing the y-axis of the cubes randomly. And we can just fill the gaps with some new blocks. Just like that we can generate some terrains. And the way we are going to generate these random values is by using Perlin noise. Perlin noise gives us random smooth value between minus 1 and plus 1. So we can just use these random values to change the y-axis of the cubes so we can generate some randomly generated terrains. After implementing Boolean noise, I just added the character controller to our game. So now our boy can jump and move around in our randomly generated terrain. You can see the terrain is so smooth, oh boy it's like he is in the moon. The controls are very simple, you can just use WASD keys to move around and the spacebar to jump. But now our game is looking like a movie from the year 1940, so let's add some textures. Here is how it looks like. And now our boy can jump and move around smoothly and also our world is looking more like Minecraft, not like a movie from the year 1940. And now our boy can walk around wherever he wants, well in the small place. So let's add infinite wall generation. This can be done by just removing the blocks which are just far away from the player and place some new blocks before him. So this will give us the feel that the world is infinitely long. But that's not as easy as I said.
and just after 5 hours of suffering, we now have infinite world generation. And you can also see that the terrains are randomly generated, they are not the same. Here it is in action. You can see that it's lagging a little bit. That's because we are rendering all the faces of the cubes even which are not visible for the player. So it's just enough to render the faces of the cubes which are just visible for the player. This will improve the performance of our game a lot. After writing some lines of code, now it is working perfectly. So let's add some more cubes. Even rendering more number of cubes, the performance is now so good. Yeah, I also added the fog. Because instead of just showing up this block suddenly from nowhere, it's better to add some fog because it's give feel like the blocks are just hidden in the fog. Oh man, where are you? Is this the heaven? Now our world look more like Minecraft, I think. So now it's time to add the ability to place and remove blocks. In order to do these things, first we have to find the block where the player is looking at. So we can just add or remove the block. This can be done by using ray casting. Ray casting is an algorithm which will help us to get the values of the place where the player is looking at. So we can just use this to get the location of the blocks. So here is the result. It's time to add some blocks. This can be done by just placing a block in the place where the ray is located. And we have to add the values of the new block to the blocks array. Now we can place blocks, which means I can do something like this. Removing blocks is very simple thing, we just have to remove the values of the block from the blocks array. Again after 5 hours of suffering, now we can remove blocks. <laughs> 
it's more than a week of suffering. So let's sit back and enjoy the beauty of the world. Our world looks kind of empty. That's because it's actually empty. So let's add some other things to our world. I just used a random number generator which will place the clouds throughout the world randomly. Do you know a scientifically proven thing that water contains 90% of water? So we are definitely adding it. And there is a one more thing we have to add. Oxygen. Because we need oxygen to live, right? Luckily, for that we have trees. So I just used another random number generator which will plant trees throughout the world. The chance of placing a tree is 1 in a thousand. So this will give us the smooth distributions of the trees. And I don't know why my trees are floating like a spaceship. Here is my personal favorite. Upside down trees. <laughs> what I'm doing with my life. Okay, now we have all these things working. So we don't have to worry about oxygen. And I also added some other blocks. So let's see some gameplay. We are definitely going to add inventory, lava, caves and some other things. But that's for another video. So subscribe to stay connected. And if you are still watching this video, I'm pretty sure that you enjoyed this video, right? Or maybe not. But if you enjoyed, then smash that like button. If you didn't, then smash that dislike button. And if you have any other um, funny ideas for our next video, let me just know in the comment section. And that's going to be it for this video. Thank you very much for watching. See you in the next video.